Update 1.4, also known as Journey's End for Terraria, is officially out, which means development on the game has now finished, and this is the final patch this game will see. Hello everybody, my name is Zen, and I'm going to talk about Terraria and its journey and what's added in this patch and all of this stuff, because in a weird way, this game is intrinsically tied to me and the YouTube channel, and has been a game that I've been with since the beginning and I constantly go back to it and I play it so it has a lot of meaning for me and that's why I feel like this journey coming to an end as is stated in the the patch description is kind of a end of an era you know in in many ways and and I want to talk about that but also you know we want to cover what the heck is new in this awesome patch because this patch is freaking incredible and adds a bunch of new stuff but first and foremost, I originally had a Terraria series up on the channel. In fact, it was uploaded on, the first episode went up on October 10th, 2011. Yeah, that was nine years ago. I've been at this for nine years. I feel so old. Send help. But the thing is, that series, you know, when I think back to it, I have really good fond memories of a guy named Holy that him and I would play through and it was a lot of fun and we had a lot of really cool people watching the videos and giving us like good feedback back then and it was awesome. But I went back and watched an episode in preparation for this video, and I do not recommend it. It is not it is not good. I sound like I'm 12, even though in reality I was like 21, 22, or something like that. And it's uh, it's been a long road since then. And of course, even after that series, I didn't upload any more Terraria content on the channel, but I was always returning to the game anytime they came out with a big update. Like when hard mode came out, that was a really big uh, time for me to come back and play the game. And I really enjoyed it. And then, of course, they constantly keep adding more and more new stuff. So, of course, I'm going to come back and enjoy the hell out of this game. And, and I did. It, it's been a game that has been with me for nine years. It is definitely uh, an experience, to say the least. You know, the, the, the witnessing of this baby that we've seen grow into something freaking incredible has been just uh, an honor to be on. And it's weird to say that about a game, but that, that is what Terraria really does best is it gets its hooks into you and then it kind of makes you a part of the family in a weird way. So let's talk about what came out in this new update. If you don't know, Terraria is this like 2D side-scrolling Metroidvania type Minecraft mixed with, well, like, I don't know, Castlevania, like old school Castlevania games. And it is difficult enough that it constantly is driving you forward to get better and to find new loot to be able to push for further and further into the game. And there's different modes that you can play, right? Like there's like a casual mode, which that's, it's not, I think it's called classic, um, which is totally fine to play. Then there's the epic or not epic. Uh, there's hard. Oh crap. Now I'm getting them all confused. So there's classic, as I said, expert which is the the next one up and expert was uh, a much diff more difficult version of the game where enemies had more health but certain bosses actually all the bosses had a specific expert drop that they would give you and that little like bag of goodies uh once they added expert and then the drops related to that was really nice because it would give you really good stuff like the worm scarf for instance is one of the best items just in the game hands down because it's just a flat damage reduction it's a it's like 17 percent or something like that it's really freaking good but then they added in this patch they added journey and master so they added bookends to the classic and expert so journey is kind of like creative mode but more gamified and what is in that is that you essentially go through and you find items and resources like dirt for example or wood and you're able to research that and add it to your like index and then once you've researched it and added it to your index you can then just spawn it into the world whenever you want and of course playing in a journey mode world you're also able to like change the time of day and put god mode on and all that kind of stuff but the the gamified version of it 
is really cool where you're, you're doing research and you're getting the stuff because unlike, you know, a creative mode in Minecraft, for instance, where you just get in and you have access to everything and you're, you're there to build, which is fun in its own right, but isn't really the game in many ways. But with this, it's different because yeah, you do have that control, but you also are incentivized to go find this stuff still, which is part of the game to go research it, to find enough of it. So then you can spawn it in and be creative with it. And I like that. I like that a lot. So yeah, they have journey mode, which is the, the new like easy mode for people who just want to be casual with it or just hang out or be creative or do any of that kind of stuff. And then they have master mode, which is what I'm playing on in the background. Now, Master is just a harder version of Expert, things like more health and whatnot. I haven't noticed, and I don't think anybody has really noticed, any more difficult um, like mechanics on boss fights or anything, but there are definitely harder enemies. Like The, the enemies have more health, they do more damage, and it really kind of sucks. But on top of that, all of the bosses, like in the Expert mode, have additional items that they drop, and they're mostly cosmetic. I say mostly because uh, the the uh, wall of flesh has like a really cool undead horse mount that it drops and like has flames on the, the, the feet of it. That seems cosmetic, but it is actually a pretty good mount. So it is useful to have and it has a pretty low drop rate. But with all the other ones, you get like little pets, like a little eyeball pet from killing the Eye of Cthulhu, which is a really cute little pet or the king slime drops a little tiny prince slime pet and they're just adorable and i love these pets so damn much i like it they're so good and i think that when you look at is basically how the, the the mechanics of the game work in tandem with the progression of the game and how satisfying the progression is i'll talk about that in a minute but then you add in the fact that now you have this expert or this master mode that gives you cool stuff on top of that. And you get these trophies when you kill them on master and then you can like make a, a trophy room, which is what I'm working on in my game. And I, I love it. I love it so much. So you got journey mode, master mode. Uh, they added a, uh, a way to play golf in the game which is ridiculous but it is it's there and it's it is fun like you can you know play golf in terraria it's an option there's new weather effects which is really great there's also and i think this is one of the things i like the most is that the world generation in the game has been updated and you can tell when you start a new world because like the biomes and stuff look a lot better they have um more natural uh like generation to them for instance like the the beaches look a lot better the desert in general looks a lot better but there's a bunch of new biomes as well like i found this like crazy bright pink biome and it just like blew me away and i've never seen that before and i thought the the visuals of it were really good in fact the visuals of this patch are really good in general because they added new backgrounds uh for the game then they added a bunch of new sprites so all of the new sprites that have been updated look freaking gorgeous compared to the, the old ones and it's just like subtle changes like just adding a little bit of shadow in the sprite which gives it more of a 3d feel and it looks great um but speaking of biomes they also have the new graveyard biome which uh, occurs when you have too many tombstones laying around a graveyard will will basically spawn a biome there and you'll get ghosts and what and it, it's it's ridiculous, but it does mean that you can't just leave your your tombstones laying around, and I think that that is important. There's so many new items that I can't even go through them all, but I'll tell you what, there, some of them are great. Like um, the whips, for instance, are amazing. I think the whips are one of the best additions to the game, which is a new weapon that you can use as the summoner type. So if you've ever played Terraria, the, you know, there's like the ranger that you could play where you're using like a bow. Then there is the melee kind of guy where you're using a sword. There's magic. You can use magic weapons. But there's also the summoner, which is um, an underplayed, I would say, play style. But one of my favorites where you're basically able to summon things and let them do the damage for you. But you're pretty weak yourself because you don't have a lot of armor. And they added a new weapon, which is a whip, which is when you whip things, it 
marks the target and then your dudes right and this is part of the problem with playing a summoner in any game like diablo 3 for example if you're looking at the necromancer it's a little bit better than the the witch doctor but the witch doctor is awful as far as pet ai is concerned so this gives you control over pet ai in terraria you whip it it marks the target your pets will attack that target and it does additional effects as well for your pets and i think that that is really cool and, and that weapon style is such a huge implementation of changing how that gameplay works that it needs to be shouted out. Like I think that that is one of the best items in the game is to go find these weapons, uh, especially if you're playing a, a summoner or in particular, if you're playing a summoner, go find these whips because they, they are completely game changing for the summoner. And like on top of all of these new items that they've added, they've also rebalanced a bunch of them and rebalanced uh, balanced a bunch of enemies, which is really important. Um, one of the standout rebalancing things that they did was they nerfed the Daedalus uh, Stormbow, which was a crazy good bow for quite a long time where um, basically you shoot arrows from the sky and while you're only using one arrow at a time it rained like six or seven down at the time and it was really powerful for things against like the destroyer which is the giant uh, mechanical worm when you get into hard mode and man like nerfing things that were a little broken admittedly and buffing things that weren't were adding new effects like flails are way better now so if you get like the ball of hurt or something like that they work so much better or like going through and and adding new weapons like i said the whips and just rebalancing how those that gameplay works or another good example is like the hallowed armor so when you kill any of the mechanical bosses in hard mode you get um, hallowed bars and those bars you can make hallowed armor the armor wasn't that great before it was okay but now it is actually quite good and because they did that they rebalanced titanium armor and adamantite armor which are of equal uh, qualities except the titanium and the adamantite had two different effects on them and the titanium was a lot better well now they just took that titanium effect that it had and just added it to the hallowed armor so basically when you attack an enemy you have a, a, a way to get a dodge which is it makes you immune to damage for one hit so it is super powerful, but they've taken that off of titanium and added a new effect to it. So there's like a bunch of really cool rebalancing that went on inside of Terraria, which is hyper important, as I mentioned before, because they added so many new items. And with adding those new items, you do want to do a balance check and make sure that, you know, they're not going to be way overpowered compared to the stuff that you had before. And that you're nerfing the stuff that was way overpowered before so that way you're not... Uh, getting screwed essentially by using the new stuff that may not be as powerful you know so just the the fact that they've added this new stuff has really changed the way the game feels and the way the game feels like it progresses and that is really important it's something i wanted to touch on because progression in terraria is in itself so so satisfying you basically start out with nothing like you would in any other crafting survival game and you have to go and like survive your first night and do that whole process and then go and start finding things like copper or tin and that you know you get iron and lead and then you work your way up through like the different um, armor types and as you're slowly getting through the stuff and then you start getting into the main progression of the game where it's like okay you're finding chests throughout the world as you're going and you're getting these cool items that have special effects and then you're also moving on and doing cool things like um finding the corruption or the crimson which is the analogous of the corruption and then you realize like oh there's these you know like in the corruption instance there's these orbs and you have to go and break the orbs and then after you break enough orbs i guess you do the same thing in the crimson but after you break three orbs you know a boss spawns and you're like oh my goodness i gotta fight a boss or sometimes you have a boss spawn before you even get to that point and you're fighting like the eye of cthulhu and you're like oh okay i get the progression of this game now i need to get enough armor to be able to fight that boss and then eventually you kill that boss and when you do you get like demonite or the crimson stuff i don't remember what the crimson stuff is 
And then you make that armor and so on and so forth. And you're going throughout the game where you're slowly killing bosses. You're slowly getting better and better stuff. And eventually you make it all the way down to the bottom of your world where like the hell area is. And you're getting hellstone and you're making, you know, that armor, which is super powerful. Or maybe you're headed over to the jungle and you're killing the queen bee and you're getting the jungle armor. And then eventually you're like oh, what's this thing at the end of my world? There's a, there's this guy at this dungeon and you talk to him in the middle of the night and he turns into a boss and you have to fight him and then you kill him and you have access to the dungeon now. And then you get all this other cool stuff. And then once you're at this point, you know, you're like, okay, time to fight what is the final boss of normal mode where you go down to the hell area, you drop the voodoo doll from the guide into the lava and you fight the wall of flesh and when you kill him your your world immediately becomes hard mode and it it resets everything basically it's like starting over from scratch in a way you still have all the stuff that you did before but there's new much more difficult enemies now you have to go through that same process again which is genius because you just got to the end of the the experience and you're like ooh like I don't think there's anything left to do in the game and then you kill the wall of flesh and now you're in hard mode and now you get to do it all over again. You get to experience the game a second time. And I think that that is a phenomenal way to, to do progression because now you get even cooler items and you fight, you know, a few of the bosses that are similar, right? You, like the twins is just two versions of the eye of Cthulhu, but they're more evil. <laughs> they, they do a lot more or like the destroyer. It's kind of like the eater of worlds, but you know, he's, mechanical and he's got like giant mechanical eyes that he shoots at you and it's it is much more difficult and you're getting cooler and cooler stuff as you go until eventually you face you know something like the moon lord or plantera or the golem and you're you're defeating these kind of final bosses in the game where you feel like you know progression has stopped but you've gone through this entire journey in the game and it is just setting up an experience where you are progressing. You are progressing constantly. You're always finding new stuff. You're always finding out, you know, there's new NPCs. And we'll get to the NPCs in a moment because they change stuff with that. But you're like always finding this new stuff. And that progression is so key to the experience of Terraria that adding more stuff to it to to make it more dynamic and rebalancing that stuff is so, so important. And that's why Journey's End has done a fantastic job of kind of putting a pin in the game and being like, yes, this game has been in development for a while. There's constant updates going out. It has been out for a long time, but we've gotten so, so much content and the game is only like 10 bucks and it constantly is going on sale for even less than that. And I have put a stupid amount of time into this game where you honestly would, you know, look at my time played in Terraria and be astonished versus like my time played in Dragon Age, for example. Like, don't get me wrong, love the Dragon Age games, love RPGs like that in general, but those games don't really hold a candle to the fact that I have almost 400 hours played in Terraria. Think about that for a second. I have almost 400 hours played in this, this stupid game <laughs> that is not something that I would have ever thought could be possible. Like, I think when I first picked up this game, I would have been like, yeah, I could put quite a bit of time into this. I would enjoy it, but I would never have guessed that I have almost 400 hours. And that is low compared to many people. Think about that for a second. There's people out there. You might be one of these people who watch this video being like, I love this game so much. I'm just trying to absorb all of the content out there for it because it is a passion of yours. And, and that brings me back to what I said earlier. This game gets its hooks in you and then it makes you a part of a family. The people who love Terraria are people who it's it's part of like their little in group, right? Where you are like, if you love Terraria, you get it when people mention how much they love this game or when they're getting into the game, you're so excited because you're like, there's so much potential here that you may really, really enjoy. And I, I love getting people into Terraria and getting them to the point where, you know, you kill the wall of flesh and they're like, okay, what's hard mode? And you're like, oh, you have no idea, do you? And, and that whole reset thing kind of puts a, a light bulb in their head and they're like, oh my goodness, like, oh, now we have to go do this process again. 
but it's not like a, oh, now we have to do it again. It's more like they're excited for it. And I love doing that with new Terraria players. So now let's talk a little bit about the changes to NPCs, because I think that this is a really big change for the game and it has a really big impact on the way that you end up playing it, but it's such a small, tiny little thing. So essentially NPCs have happiness now. That seems finicky and really annoying. Like when I first heard that, I was like, I don't want to deal with it. No, I don't want to have to deal with that. That sounds so just not exciting to me. But in reality, it is totally fine. It's not as um, finicky as it sounds. Essentially, they just like living in certain places. The witch doctor, the dryad, and the painter, for instance, like the jungle. So just make them a house in the jungle. Boom. Put them together. They're done. Then, you know, like the guide, for instance, or um, the the nurse, you know, put them in the forest, put the demolitionist and the uh, the the goblin and I think who else goes down there? I think it's the, the, the cloth here. You put them underground and then you put like the, the arms dealer and the die trader, you put them in the, the desert and you just like, essentially you're setting up these mini, instead of having one gigantic base with like a hundred NPCs there. I know that's not that many. I'm exaggerating heavily, but it feels like that where you just have everybody in one little place, which is nice when you think about it. Cause you're like, I could just go between all of these NPCs that I needed at any given point, they're all right here. But what is really cool about this change is suddenly you go from having this really large, like gigantic tower full of NPCs in tiny little boxes to having a bunch of different houses throughout the world. And what happens is when everybody is happy or when certain people are happy, you gain the ability to buy certain pylons like the forest pylon. And you could throw that sucker down or the desert pylon. You could throw that sucker down. And as long as there are two or more NPCs nearby that pylon, you could teleport to it. And you can teleport from it. So essentially, you know, you, you're in your little forest biome. Mine happens to be in the middle of my map. My dudes are happy. I want to go to the jungle. I just click on my map and I click on the pylon because I have three NPCs over there. And they're hanging out in their little jungle house. It doesn't feel like they are ever too far away. It feels like they are all still a part of that giant tower of little boxes with NPCs in it because it only takes me a second to teleport over to them and I really like that because it actually does change up the game in a way where you suddenly start I don't know for other people but for me I was like I'm gonna build a freaking pyramid in the desert something I've never done but it's like the most obvious thing ever I saw I built a little pyramid for my desert people and then I wanted to build a little like tiki house for my jungle people so I did that and then I built this cool underground cave area for my underground people and I think that that is such a cool little thing that makes a really big difference on the game and how it plays and now suddenly you could just quickly teleport between these different biomes and and I like that a lot. It, it just, it changes the game in such a good way. So overall, I think what my thoughts are, are that Journey's End is, it, it is an expansive patch, as you would expect. You know, the past few have been, pff, like, they've been real bangers, right? There's been a lot of stuff in these patches. Journey's End is no, it's no slouch. It's got a lot of stuff in it. And it really does just take this, awesome game that is nearly perfect and it just adds a little bit more to it just a little bit more polish just a little bit more coolness to it and then it says here you go i'm out right and now it's now it's done and now i'm and this is this is the key for me now i am so motivated to go finish the game so i started from nothing and now I'm working my way through and I'm currently on hard mode, which you guys are seeing in the background, but I'm just slowly going through just in my own pace, killing the bosses on expert or not on expert on master and getting these things done and getting the little trophies. And I'm taking the time to make a really cool trophy building step by step. And that's going to take a while to do, but at the end of this process, I'm going to feel like I have gone on a journey. I'm going to feel like from Back in 2011, when I first uploaded that first episode, all the way until today, or maybe a week from now, depending on how long it takes me to finish the rest of the stuff that I want to do in Terraria, 
I'm going to feel like I've gone on this really expansive journey and I'm going to have this world that is saved to my cloud on Steam that I could always go back to when I need a little bit of a nostalgia kick. When I want to go play Terraria just for a little bit, which ends up being for like 20 hours or something like that, because it always happens that way. It's like, I got a Terraria kick, I'm going to go play. And then you just get lost in the world. But to be able to have a, a world that has all of my my... Uh, accomplishments killing all of the bosses on master including new bosses that have been added i think that that will be a really good way to kind of close out this strange chapter that has been the last nine years of my life and i love that i love it so much and the next nine years who knows what will happen i'll probably still be making stupid videos on the internet but at the end of the day I will have had this cool experience that I can look back and say from 2011 to 2020, I, I've i had this experience that this game stuck with me this entire time. And this was like a really good bookend to a decade of my life almost that completely changed me. And um, I've seen so much growth on the channel since then. I've seen so much growth as an individual since then. And I think that going back and watching those old videos, though I do not recommend it because they are bad, shows you the, the journey. And I think that, like I said earlier, Journey's End is the perfect title to this update because it is the perfect title to this decade for me. And I love it. And I, I, and I cannot stress that enough. Like this game is phenomenal for 10 bucks. I've gotten 400 hours out of it. Everybody needs to play it if you haven't played Terraria, especially with this new update, because it is just the best. It is like a near perfect game and I love it to death. Now, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you've been thinking of this new update. Have you been on the same journey? When did you get into Terraria? Like all of this stuff. I just want to know everything about your Terraria adventure in general. Let me know all of that in the comments. And with all of that being said, we shall see you guys next time.